Welcome back, everybody, um, to the 2023 Global Animal Management Conference brought to you in partnership with Animal Evac New Zealand and Four Paws International. The next presentation, I have the pleasure to introduce uh, Ms. Valentina Vosna, uh, Task, Force, Task Force Coordinator at the Euro Group for Ukraine. Um, it's a privilege to have Valentina with us. Um, and the abstract and bio are available to read from our website under speakers. Before we start, <clears throat> a few uh, housekeeping issues in case you are joining us for the first time. The Zoom chat feature has been disabled, so you can place your questions and answers uh, in, the, in the specific future, uh, feature, and we will try to answer them at the end of this conference. This year, we've enabled multilingual closed captions, which is um, pretty uh, convenient. So if you would like to hear the presentation or read, uh, uh, read it in another language, click it in the closed captions icon at the bottom of the Zoom screen. We encourage you to use uh, the hashtag JADMsConf for Twitter and other social media. A short evaluation will be made available when you exit this uh, session. And as a reminder, the video recording will not be available until it has been edited and um, we we'll plan to release it later this year. So without any further delay, it's my pleasure to welcome Valentina. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Gerardo, for this introduction. Hi, everyone. My name is Valentina Vozna. I am a coordinator of the Ukraine Task Force at the Eurogroup for Animals. I'm pleased to present today what the European Union can do in order to better protect animals in disasters. More specifically, my presentation will look into the current opportunities in the EU to include animals in the existing disaster management framework, which is Union Civil Protection Mechanism. So in Europe, we are now experiencing more and more disasters. Summer wildfires, wildfires have become the new normal and are raging across Europe. Now, while I'm just speaking, there are wildfires raging in Greece. The floods are also becoming more frequent and severe, and not even to mention the war in Europe, which doesn't see an end. So in my presentation, I'll very briefly present the work of the Eurogroup for Animals and uh, its Ukraine task force, which actually uh, prompted our thinking about the need for better protection of animals in disasters in the European Union. I'll then explain how currently the civil protection mechanism works in the EU. I'll also present a few ideas of where we believe animals should be integrated. And in the end, I'll speak about the legal basis of the Union Civil Protection Mechanism, as we believe the most important step for protecting animals in disasters in Europe is their legal inclusion into the EU disaster law. So Eurogroup for Animals is uh, an animal advocacy organization based in Brussels. Today, we have around 80 members and together with whom we advocate for better uh, protection of animals by achieving better legislation in the EU. From the very beginning of the Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in 2022, many of our members were willing to help animals on the ground in Ukraine and had the resources at their disposal, but the actions of our members were really limited, mainly because of the lack of the information about the current needs of animals in Ukraine, because of the lack of the coordination between the NGOs, logistical issues, and uh, the lack of reliable and known partners on the ground. So at that time, Eurogroup Animals, together with its members, created the Ukraine Task Force in order to help solve these issues. And our initial activities consisted of responding to the ad hoc request of help uh, of specific shelters or individuals in Ukraine, as well as many of our members were present at the Ukrainian-Polish border, um, providing first aid to animals arriving together with refugees. During our work in uh, 2022, we identified three main blocks of issues for animals in the European emergency response. Well, first of all, there was no consideration of animals in the humanitarian aid or the Union Civil Protection Mechanism. Secondly, there was no harmonized evacuation protocols. 
the evacuations of animals still were happening, but at a very ad hoc uh, basis without any specific criteria or, um, or prioritization. And thirdly, there was a clear lack of infrastructure which would allow um, to host the refugees together with their animals, those who were arriving to the EU countries. So when we started thinking of what could be done today at the EU level in order to better protect animals in disasters, we focused on the Union Civil Protection Mechanism. The Union Civil Protection Mechanism, also often called the UCPM, has been de designed to assist specifically countries in saving human lives in disasters. Recognizing that this initiative is already working very well for people, we believe that animals should be integrated into this existing mechanism rather than creating a separate one. So it's important to understand how the UCPM works today in order to see where exactly the animals could be integrated. Uh, a few words about the mechanism itself. It was established in 2001 with the goal of strengthening cooperation in the area of civil protection within the EU countries, plus nine participating countries through the mechanism. I insist on the word cooperation here, and I'll explain, explain a bit later on when we speak about the legal basis, why it's important. Uh, of course, the mechanism itself is focused on improving uh, is, is operating in the three stages of the disaster management cycle in the prevention, preparedness, and response uh, to disasters. The important pillars of the work of the Union Civil Protection Mechanism are the Emergency Response Coordination Center, uh, the European Civil Protection Pool, and the RESC EU. The Emergency Response Coordination Center is really the heart, the heart of the EU civil protection mechanism. It coordinates the delivery of the assistance of disaster to disaster-stricken countries. It is based in uh, Brussels and it works 24-7 monitoring the appearance of disasters in the world. Uh, the second pillar is the pool. It brings together resources from all the member states and participating countries. These resources are usually ready for deployment to a disaster zone at a short notice. This may include rescue and medical teams, experts, specialized equipment, and transportation. Uh, the Resc EU is kind of a new uh, addition to the mechanism. It was established as a reserve of the European capacities. It is fully funded by the EU, and it includes more of a hardcore. Um, hardcore equipment such as firefighting planes and helicopters and medical evacuation planes. So the way it works today is that the country in a disaster should activate the UCPM in order to receive any of the assistance. Important co component we learned about this, its functioning is that the assistance to animals won't be provided to the country in need if the latter hasn't specifically requested for it. For example, Ukraine did activate this mechanism, but requested only the provisions of aid for the animals in agriculture sector. Thus, no provisions of pet food, as well as no aid to wild animals in captivity were secured through this mechanism. Meanwhile, Ukrainian, uh, meanwhile, the international NGOs have been receiving a lot of requests from the individuals asking for pet food and veterinary medicine in Ukraine. So ideally, we think that the aid to animals should be integrated into this mechanism, and even if it is not requested by the government in the early days of the disasters, it still should be provided. So considering these pillars of the Union Cell Protection Mechanism, this, these are the existing opportunities, opportunities which we see for animals. Like first and probably the most important step at this stage is to legally protect animals in the EU disaster law. Uh, if animals are protected legally, the countries will invest into better coordination among actors and equipment necessary, for example, for the, for the evacuation. On the practical level, we believe that emergency response coordination center should really include the national veterinary services, also the animal protection NGOs, uh, into the coordination of their efforts, uh, notifying them, 
specifically about the needs of animals on the grounds. This will allow them to avoid duplication of efforts and streamline their efforts to where they're most necessary, exactly in the same way as it done for humans today. We also think that Rask EU could invest into the animal friendly, friendly refugee camps. We saw millions of refugees coming to the EU with their animals in 2022, proving once again that people refuse to evacuate without their animals. And uh, we believe that the EU can encourage the countries to invest into the equipment necessary for the evacuation of the animals from the disaster zone. This equipment should be a valuable, in our opinion, under the Union Civil Protection Pool. And the last but definitely not the least is um, the EU should require farmers, zoos, commercial animal dealers and research facilities and any other facilities which uh, keep animals to develop preparedness plans for the disasters based on the prior risk analysis, as well as to have the contingency plans in place to safely evacuate and care for animals in a disaster situation. So let's see where we stand in terms of uh, the legal basis of the Union Cell Protection Mechanism to understand whether animals could be integrated into it. So there is the primary and secondary legislation according to, to which UCPM functions. The mechanism itself is based on the Article 196 of the Treaty of the functioning, on the functioning of the European Union, which says that the Union shall encourage cooperation between member states for preventing and protecting against natural and man-made disasters. There is another article which also said that, says that the Union shall assist the member states uh, in the event of the natural or man-made uh, disasters. So this cooperation and assistance clauses are important to understand because it basically says to us that the Union can only support and complement the actions of the member states. In other words, uh, disaster management is the competence of the member state and not of the EU. Speaking of the secondary legislation, I would like to bring to your attention the decision 1313 from 2013. And there is an article which um, specified that the protection should be ensured by the union mechanism shall cover primarily people, but also the environment against all kinds of natural and man-made disasters. So there is no reference to animals as such, and the only reference here we have is to the environment. Luckily, uh, this decision was amended in 2019, and now it recognizes in its recitals the need to reduce the vulnerability of animal welfare and wildlife as part of the, as part of the disaster risk prevention and management but it still doesn't cover animals in terms of protection. So currently the UCPM doesn't have the mandate to protect the animals, but in our opinion, it has the obligation to save families. And we believe that at least the companion animals in disasters can be viewed as part of the family, which is why integrating them into the civil protection efforts will be a natural extension to ensure that the whole family are protected in the disasters in, the, uh, in Europe. Also, from the experience of Ukrainian refugees bringing their companion animals to the EU, show cases that these animals are really part of the family. And um, we know that humans bond with their animals and this influences their evacuation behavior. And, um, which is why animal rescue should become part of the UCPM interventions. And in our opinion, including the protection of animals under the UCPM with that would make the mechanism more efficient itself. Um, I thank you for your attention. I'm open to any questions you may have, and please do not hesitate to come back to me via an email after this, after this conference. Valentina, that was a great, Thank you. Uh, great, uh, great presentation. I am looking forward to uh, study uh, your uh, 
comments on legislation in detail. The first question I want to ask before anybody else uh, comes up with the with the others is your thoughts about the future. Uh, have you um, discussed uh, in any shape of, or form uh, the uh, reconstruction plans for Ukraine? And uh, do you think uh, one of the one or two of the chapters of the Geneva Convention into the future could help as a as a blueprint? to start talking about farm and domestic animals in uh, conflict situations such as this invasion? Mm -hmm. Well, the reconstruction and recovery of Ukraine is a huge topic currently in the EU. Of course, we've been paying attention to it. More specifically, uh, the Commission just announced the regulation, the draft regulation for the Ukraine facility, which will be one of the main mechanisms to uh, provide the financial assistance to Ukraine starting as of 2024, which basically means that the European Union is not going to wait until the end of the war and they're ready to start the financing of the reconstruction today. What this means for us in terms of the of animals, and you very well mentioned the farm animals, because we know about the farms being destroyed in, in the war zones in Ukraine. For example, there is this farm in Chernobyevka, which is in the south of Ukraine, and it's a poultry farm where 4 million chickens were, were died because of the hunger, because the system that it was, it was the electronic feeding system, and there, was, there were electricity cuts, and basically they stopped feeding the chickens. So where we how we see linking it is uh, to lobby and to advocate for the provision of any reconstruction of the farms into, in Ukraine in more sustainable farms. For example, if those farms are built, that they're built in the areas which are not prone to disasters or not prone to floods, for example. Uh, also, uh, we will be advocating for the reconstruction of the farms in Ukraine, um, which comply with the European animal welfare standards, because we know that Ukraine is willing to join the EU. So it means that one day, in any ways, it will have to, to, to comply with the animal welfare standards of the European Union. And uh, from our perspective, it's going to be just a waste of an investment if today the farms are recon reconstructed, not according to the EU standards. So, yes, we are looking into this perspective, uh, but unfortunately, it's all still at the level of uh, discussion on our side. Thank you. Um, there is a question, if you can read it. Um, otherwise, it says, can you show your email again? We cannot click on these links for social media. Um, I will write type my email here in the chat, if it's OK. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, thank you very much. I was in, um, in uh, the Polish border with Ukraine last year. This, uh, contacting the chief veterinary officers of neighboring countries, and and I completely agree with your point of uh, <clears throat> uh, helping the uh, the country uh, get to the same standards as as the EU for for traffic of you know animal traffic, the normal animal traffic between between mm -hmm. the. Thank you very much again. Thank I you, am, I'm very happy to have uh, been present to your presentation.